Hi, welcome back to Air Engine Research. In my last video about my 235 compressed air engine, I said that I would show a another video of how it is to replace parts and do maintenance on the air engine. But also I'd like to go back and show you a little short video of the original design, which was a triangular shape. And today I went ahead and made the video taking one of the cylinders off, showing you how to take the valves off and how the timing is set up when you uh, put the cylinder back on with the valves, or if you just replace a, a valve, how to set that back up. Also, if you're interested in what I'm doing and you would subscribe, you'd be notified then anytime a new video or more information is put out about what I'm doing. And I would also appreciate if you give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on how you feel about what I'm doing and whether you think it's worthwhile. So now let's go ahead and watch the videos. This is my uh, Tri-Air Engine 25 cylinder. I only have right now the three cylinders hooked up with the airlines. This is still in process of uh, manufacturing and as I do each step, uh, I will make a small video just to show how things went. In my last video, with the uh, five-cylinder engine, I talked about how easy it was to do work and replacement parts and things on the engine itself without much trouble. Um, for you first-time viewers, you probably would be beneficial to go back to my website, which is Air Engine Research, and look at some of the videos that I've made already about this engine. But anyway, it's a, it's a five-cylinder engine, as you can see. These two here are on one set of the crankshaft. These two here, or these three rather, this one, this one, and this one are together. And the three then can be run separate, or the two can be run separate, or they can both be run together. So in just a little while, I'll start working on it, and you can see then how simple it is to do replacement parts if you have any problems. Okay, well the first thing that I might want to say is you only need a few tools to work on this thing. The uh, wrench here would be for your air connections. And this one, these would be for the quarter inch bolts and everything that's that's on them. And that, and then the impact for doing, you know, doing the work and stuff. Uh, before I start doing it though, I want to on my valve system here and the two control valves for the air, I've got it for, you can use it as a three, three part uh, thing. The first one would be where it goes to the three cylinders to start with, or if that's not quite enough, then you can kick it to all five cylinders to get started. Once you're running with the five cylinders on a you know, and you're moving, you can either go back to the, the three cylinders if you think you need the power, or you can go to two cylinders, which would be more of an economy. That'll save quite a bit of air. And actually, the, uh, the speed would be faster with a two cylinder also. So, just for that. And in order to take 
something apart, you just use your quarter inch impact with a nut wrench or whatever when you need to. Some of them are tapped and threaded. Some of them have nuts, but there's basically nothing else other than quarter inch machine bolts. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go ahead and take this cylinder off just to show you how easy it is to get it off and what then you can do to repair or replace or that's the airline just a little bit tight on that I mean as far as the getting to it with your fingers but it's not too bad really Okay, take that off. Have to be careful because there's a little connector in or a little tube inside the tubing to keep the, the airline from collapsing when you tighten it up. <clears throat> okay. Then in order to take the uh, let's see, I'll take the bottom off first. I would suggest when you take something apart that you right away put it back together the way you took it apart since they are at least when I make them they're they're not exactly symmetrical so you might want to put it back together the same way that way I had a little shim in there just to take up some of the play to make it run a little quieter. Although it still is pretty noisy, as you'll see later on when I run it. But that's not too bad, really. Okay, so that's the connecting rod you've taken off. So now there's only a couple more bolts and I can take the cylinder completely out. So oh, let's get it up. Whoops. And then in order to take the cylinder out, there's two bolts down in here. I guess you can see them maybe, hopefully. And those have to be taken out. Let me get a little something to block it up here. And then you can rotate the thing to get the cylinder thing out of the way so you can get to the get to the next one. Same thing with your your cap on your on the cylinder too. Make sure you put it back the same way as it was attached. And there's your cylinder and the two valves. Just to keep things in order. Okay. 
So now, actually, if you have a problem, there's no reason why you can't run it with that cylinder missing. You would just have to put a plug in your airline and then it can run, no problem. As I say, even on the, uh, if you run the two cylinder one, you don't even have to put a plug in it. two valves. One is an inlet and this would be the exhaust valve. <clears throat> to take it off you've got four bolts. Let's see, let me mark that first. I like to mark positions at least so I know, you know where it was. I have a gasket in there, but there's nothing really to it. There's just a, a it'd be a spring inside with a seat and a piston that goes up and down to let the air out. It comes through here when you push it up, then it lets it come out through the exhaust. You got a now you would have to have a little bigger Allen wrench to get this off, but pull that off, the spring comes out, the whole thing comes up, and, and the seat on it can be replaced. It's just a washer out of a faucet, really is all it is, so there's no nothing special there. There's no seals on it other than inside the top, because it doesn't matter if this leaks or not, you're exhausting the air anyway. So, put it back together. You just have to put it whoop, upside down. Sorry about that. You have to put it on this way. Okay, about right there. So that would have been in case you uh, have a problem with the exhaust valve leaking, you would replace this one. That's a little bit too high yet. Go back down a little bit more. That's basically how you time it. How far the thing is from the, the bar that goes across the top.
if you have a problem with your cylinder inside, this, this is just a thing. This cylinder and the, the piston rather is not attached to the to the push rod or to the crank. Inside that's it, I can get it to come out of there. There's the, the, pit, uh, the cylinder or the piston that is not attached to the thing. So that when you're driving down the road, if you're not putting air to it, you're not wearing out the seal on your piston because the piston just stays up at the top. As soon as you put air to it, then it starts pushing. So some of the noise you hear might be sometimes where the piston is not perfectly catching up with the thing as it goes down, the piston has to be timed just right in order to stay with the push rod. But it works rather well. It saves some on resistance because you're not pulling this thing up and down. This thing just floats freely inside. Lined up perfectly. That's the most trouble I have usually is getting that to go back in the in the seat where it was before. Just a little wiggle and it goes in. That's all there is to it when you want to well let's see what is it to do? Is that on the other side? Okay. And to put it back on, just a matter of taking these back out. Bear with me a minute. <clears throat> I know it's not very easy to see that, but it's fairly simple. I mean, you just have to.
be able to see it up close. It's hard to do with showing the video. But come on. Adapter gets stuck in the Allen head a lot of times, and I can't get it to come loose. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's there's marks right here that this is number three cylinder, and I've got three dots on each of the mating parts so that I keep them matched up like they're supposed to be. On my next video that I work on, I'm going to be doing some calculations on how much air is used for each of the two cylinders or when you use the three cylinders. And I guess it would just be an average then of the, the two of them if you run it on all five. So you just take the air amount plus the, the uh, the three cylinder and the two cylinder and divide it by two, I guess. That should give you an average of how far you'd be able to go with with running two, three, or five. Okay, let me lay this on. Tighten up those things. Oh, I'm Almost forgot to put my little bushing in there. And I put the uh, bushing on the top because that's the only place that it really has any pressure. It's always pushing down on it, so that's where I want the bushing to be. There we go. Okay, then you have to hook up the air line again. Make sure that little copper tube, tube is stuck in there so you don't flatten out your airline when you tighten it back up. But as you see, everything is almost accessible. I mean, there may be a little bit of where you have to get your fingers in, but for the most part, everything is right out in the open where you can get to it. And you don't have a bunch of special tools that, that you need either. That's one thing I, I like. Um, there's, let me see, when, when you time it, Let it rest down here. Okay, if you can see this, there's a bar right here, just a flat bar and a flat bar. And when you want to time it, you have to take your valves and push it up so that when it's at top dead center, it just touches underneath the plate. As you can see how it, it goes. So that's how that works. Now, I'll show you 
how the engine runs with two and the speed and stuff that you can hear. Okay, to start off, what I would do probably would be have it in the middle. You start and then switch it either to three if you're starting to go somewhere because the hardest part would be when you start off naturally. And as soon as you put air to it, it's going to go. Once you get moving, you can switch to the three cylinders if you don't need too much power. Or you can leave it in five until you get up on a flat. Then you can either go to the two cylinders or three cylinders, you know, to run. I would suggest maybe starting off in the three, get it up to speed, and then switch it over to two once you get going pretty good. So oh, that's basically my how you take things apart and replace something if you need to or take it apart to repair it and that's basically it as you can see it's it's just a free setting thing the amount would be just a, a flat plate where these would be mounted to it and this would Instead of having this, there would be a connector that would go from this to the drive shaft of your transmission in your truck or car. Now, I wouldn't suggest trying to use this on an automatic because of the, it's not a positive drive. Whereas with a manual transmission, you can put it in high gear if it's strong enough to run it in high gear, third gear or fifth gear, whichever type of a transmission you have. But anyway, it would be hooked directly to the transmission. You don't need a clutch. Of course, you could use the clutch to shift it if you have to for some reason. Maybe like, well, to go in reverse, I guess you would want to do that. So then you have a clutch, you just put it in reverse and then turn the engine on and it would go backwards. So if you have any particular questions, uh, feel free to, you know, make comments on my website. And like I say, I'll be doing another video here soon to show some of the theoretical distance traveled. But keep in mind also now, when you see the numbers that I'll put on that spreadsheet, they are based on the engine running continuously for for that long of a time but in reality when you're driving a lot of times you'll let off the off the gas or off the air and it'll just freewheel because none of the pistons are moving up and down to slow it down it just freewheels so there's going to be times when you won't be using air that would make it go just a little bit further For to now. I guess I'll call it a day and see you next time. Oh, before I go though, if you would, please give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. And if you're interested in what we're doing, please subscribe and you'll be notified anytime I have a new video out. Plus you can go back and there's something like I think it was 78 videos that I've made in the past. And some of those are pretty interesting. Some of them are not so interesting, but it would be worthwhile for you to go back and check out some of them. So once again, thanks for checking in.